Hello everyone! How you doing? It's your friendly neighborhood DIYer here. I'm pretty sure that might be copyrighted. DIY Danny here coming at you with a bit of a different type of video style. With the current situation, we're social distancing, we're staying home, and I am trying to bust out some more content than my usual schedule, so you're gonna have to bear with me. This is a little bit more vloggy. You're coming on that DIY train with me versus me kind of recollecting a story and I hope uh, hope you guys like it. So in this video, I am going to be doing a little bit of a living room shake up. You know, we're shaking things up. There's <laughs> a couple projects that I have been dying to do and I just didn't have time to do it. And girl, you ain't got no excuses anymore. So, we're gonna shake up the living room, update a couple pieces, I'm gonna DIY a couple pieces, and over on Instagram, I had asked you guys to ask some questions that you wanted to see me answer in this video, so I am also going to be answering some questions while I'm DIY. And I hope that you guys find a little bit of inspiration or motivation as you join my journey. So, without further ado, let's jump into this DIY train and get the project started. Sounds like a song. Let's get the project started. Woo! Let's get on this DIY train and get started. <laughs> Just, I'm in a mood. Just start the video. This is currently my living room in its full glory. Let me show you guys. You see this background all the time. It's behind me in my videos. But I want to focus on two items in this room. This guy and I have a matching side table right here. I'm gonna tell you guys something and I don't want you to get mad, okay? Put the camera down, because this is real talk. When I bought this piece, I absolutely loved it, but it just doesn't really reflect who I am today. I just really don't like the red. I'm not discriminating against colors. Maybe red can be like an accent piece, then you can stay, but I don't want any red pieces in my home. My style has changed, I've evolved, and I just think it's time to give her an update. So I'm going to be painting this piece and the side table so that I can show you how something of color can absolutely change the entire feeling of a room. I'm actually going between like three colors right now of what I'm gonna paint this. This is the bold option. This is Tilton Yellow. It's very bold, very yellow but I kind of love it. It's like, it's happy, makes me feel good. And it would like, when you walk in, you're like, whoa, that's like a really yellow cabinet. Then of course, there's my ultimate favorite, Amsterdam green, but I feel like that's too obvious. Like that's very predictable for me. And then I also thought I could go with this. This is the Athena black. A bold black on the wall would also look amazing. And then you can kind of like style it with some color. I'm gonna like set them up here and see what we think. Do you see it? I just don't know. When in doubt, I always think it's best to get a second opinion, so I'm going to call in the only other person that I know to call. <laughs> you guys know her really well. I'm calling my friend Alexandra. Oh, she's putting an effect on. There's like 14 in my house, so I need a filter. I like the hearts, that's, that's a nice touch. I am trying to decide what color I want to do this cabinet, which I'm sure you've seen in my room, and this side table. My first gut is saying go bold, go with the Tilton on this, and then maybe black as the side table. Thoughts? My instinct is to go black because it's, I feel like you have black like elements in your space. Yeah, true. But I think the yellow is like the most unsafe option. I'm kind of curious to see how it's gonna look. I would say either black for the TV stand. Yep. And then like green for the side table. But if you do yellow, please send me a picture because I would not pick yellow. I think we're all living in isolation. I'm either like gone crazy or it's like the best idea I've ever had. You can always paint over it. It's true, paint is paint. You can paint over it. Thank you for your opinion. Okay, go bold, go yellow, and then maybe green for the side table. I'm down, I'm down to try it. We're going bold, everybody. First things first, I think we're gonna need to give this a bit of a clean out. I don't know the last time I actually cleaned the inside of the cabinet. Hey, Boo Boo. You wanna play, like, play the game of what's in the cabinet? A lot of games, a lot of ping pong balls. Why do I have so many ping pong balls? I don't even play beer pong. 
Oh my God. Best Catan game ever. I think this is a little too real right now. Won't be playing this. Such a good game. Fun. It's a puzzle. I hope all the pieces are still there. Video games. Randomly office space. Lord, it was time to do this. Okay, get in. It's going to Nardia. We're gonna give this a clean, and then we're gonna get this prepped for painting. So it turns out I don't own a drop sheet <laughs> anywhere, but I do own brown crap paper. So we're gonna craft the crap out of this living room. <laughs> it sounded funnier in my head. So I am going to start prepping this piece by taping off all the hardware and all of the glass around it. So I thought while I'm doing that, I could start to answer some of your questions. What are your must have power tools for someone who doesn't have a garage? This is actually a really good question. The one tool that I always recommend uh, is a drill by Ryobi. It's a little compact drill. It is small and it's perfect for kind of just like everyday DIY around the house projects. The other tool is a jigsaw. A jigsaw is really great because it's a small tool. You can cut lots of things with it. You can cut into a wall, you can cut into wood. I'm not multitasking really well right now. The last thing that I would recommend is the saw with the uh, the miter box guide. I use it all the time, and especially if you're using it indoors, it's perfect. Where did I start learning the woodworking skills that I have today? Before I became a full-time YouTuber, I uh, worked for a production company in Toronto that made lifestyle television shows. And all I did was just learn how to do things for five years. But in terms of my practical skills as a DIYer, I think the only way you can really learn how to do something is just to do it. Um, and then make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Just like all of you guys, I would go on YouTube, I would watch how to use tools, and I would just go and do it. Just for the record, this was definitely the better way to do it. Three strips across versus doing it this way. Now, the nice thing about using chalk paint is that there's actually no prep needed for my surface. Okay, so we're going in with Tilton. Check it out. Is that not the most beautiful yellow? Oh, it's so happy. This is great. Don't get me wrong, am I still nervous about the color? Yes, but do I embrace color? Yes. Before I start painting, let's see some new questions. What's your favorite DIY of the ones you shared on your YouTube channel? Ooh, the DIY arched cabinet was pretty spectacular and I love it so, so much. Okay, we're going in. Ooh, it's definitely going to need more than one coat, but I don't hate it so far. What was the first project that I made that I was proud of and how old was I? This is so funny. You know when it was really cool and popular to have desks over top of your bed? So you would create like a little bed desk thing? That was the very first wood project I ever built. Did it work? Yes. Was it great? No. How old was I? I was, I think, 22? I was 22 when I first started my first wood project. I think it was 23. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm really liking this yellow. Doesn't look like much right now, but it will look like something. Next question, am I worried about painting in white? Not at all. First coat always goes on a little rough. I'm guessing it's probably gonna take about three rounds to get this perfect. <laughs> I hate it so much. I'm gonna paint it black. Back to work. Here's hoping this is a much better choice. First coat done. I am very much enjoying the black. Wow. I guess maybe I can move over to the side table. Oh, I forgot a leg. Yay, I'm straight and green. Okay, so I am painted <laughs> and 
the table is painted. I think this green just needs to be a bit richer. So I think what I'm gonna do is two parts green, one part black, and uh, I think it's gonna get to the color that I want. That is a nice dark green. Let's paint a table. So I've now gotten paint on my sweater. I should have known better. I mean, I was wearing white, but that's okay. This is my DIY sweater. It is officially 721. I'll probably call it for the night. Get up tomorrow, and then I'm gonna start the waxing process. So I will see you all tomorrow. Bye. Good morning, I just got up, so don't mind my hair. But I wanted to turn the camera on really quickly because I wanted you guys to see the full glory of what these two pieces look like. How beautiful is that dark green? I just love it. This was the first time I actually noticed the legs. Like, it's just the most beautiful and interesting table I've ever seen. It's kind of weird how color can change your perspective on something. Either way, the goal for today is to drink my coffee, get some better clothes on, and then do some touch-ups on the two pieces. I missed a lot of spots in the dark last night, <laughs> so I'm gonna touch up that. So I was just sitting here and while I was waiting for the green and the black touch-ups to dry, I realized I have this magazine rack thing. I thought maybe I'm not ready to give up on the yellow yet. So I'm going to try um, painting this little guy uh, the yellow color. Guys, we're just gonna YOLO this situation. I do like the yellow though. It's officially time to move on to the waxing part. I have a waxing brush. It's a little bit thicker, and this is designed so that you can work the wax right into the paint. And then the second thing that I have is a linen towel. That means that it's lint-free. What I'm gonna be doing is applying the wax with the wax brush, and then I'm going to be wiping it with this lint-free cloth. So I'm really working this wax into the table. I wanna make sure we get it nice and soft. Now, do you see how there's all these like little um, pieces here? That's why you need the lint-free cloth. I'm just gonna start wiping it in. I'm pushing it into the tabletop and you'll see that they start to disappear. Now that the wax is on it, I definitely see a transition in how the piece looks. There is a bit of a sheen to it, but it feels like richer. I noticed it mostly on the green one. It's a lot darker, but they both look stunning. So with that, I'm going to finish filming for the day and then I will report back with you guys tomorrow morning on how it all looks. See you then. So it is another lovely day of self-isolation and we all know I painted the little magazine rack yellow. And then I thought, you know what? I'll paint like a cute little floral design on it, which it was gonna get painted pink and it was gonna be really cute. Walked into the living room this morning and I just kept looking at this and I was like, Pop up. I don't think I'm a yellow person. No. Definitely not a yellow person, which makes me kind of sad. I want to love this color so much, but even this was too much. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this a really nice natural tone. It's going to go really well with dun, 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 this beautiful cabinet. One good redesign decision. <laughs> this is going to be the next redesign decision. Trust the process. A quick follow up. I ended up going with a Chicago gray and uh, just love it. So I am going to move on to my next DIY. I don't know if any of you guys remember this bad boy. In my Target haul, I bought this when I was in Florida with Alexander Gator, and I said that I was going to hack it. It's finally time to hack it. So this is technically like a woven vase for anybody who's unfamiliar with it. My thought is to turn it into a pendant light. At home right now, I have one of these, and it looks like it's gonna fit if I take the bottom off. I also have a pendant light. I own like 
seven pendant lights. It's, I, I have no idea why. So the first thing I'm gonna do is detach the bottom of this. So while I'm doing this DIY, I figured I could answer another question. Advice for people trying to grow a DIY channel such as yourself. The first piece of advice I always give anybody, always be yourself. You never wanna lie about who you are because your audience is always going to know when you are lying. <gasps> Ta -da! Kind of like a little coaster now. My next piece of advice is don't do it if you're not having fun. I don't think people realize how much work it is to actually create content on a regular basis and um, keep it going, keeping motivated, keeping positive. I mean, it's that saying, if you love what you do, you never work it in your life. But when it comes to YouTube, I think you truly do have to have a passion for it because your audience will also see that inside you. They will want to follow you because of your passion. And when you stop loving it, don't do it anymore. And then let's push this through here. Okay, let's see if it goes. <gasps> oh my God, it fits. Oh, I love it. Let's turn it on and see what it looks like, eh? Oh, it actually works better than I thought it was going to. I think I'm going to put this in my bedroom. Love it. Way to go DIY. Okay, I'm moving on to the last DIY, a project that was inspired by one of my favorite DIY books. This is called A Well-Crafted Home by Janet Crother. It's an excellent DIY how-to book. There's one project in particular that I really loved in it. So I'm going to be making a DIY wooden dowel blanket rack. I plan to put it here. Let me show you guys actually. Stand by. If I put the dowels here, I think that's gonna look amazing, right? So I picked up this bag cord. This seems like a good rope to do it. It's a little stretchy, but it's pretty thick and strong. And I'm going to be using spade bits to create holes in the dowels so that it's gonna have a dowel at the top and a dowel at the bottom. And then the rest of the rack is gonna be this rope. So the first thing I'm doing is marking one foot mark seven times down the dowel and then matching up the second dowel to it and marking it off. This way I'm going to have seven ladder steps. I mean, I wouldn't want to climb up this ladder. Well, it's decorative. Yeah. Decorative ladders, not for climbing. Tug was never helping. No, we? Aren't you helping? I'm just fraying out the end to give it some extra little fluffy texture too. So here it is, the finished cabinet. I love the way this dark, rich cabinet looks now. It feels so much more luxurious and warmer in this space. There's a couple spots where you still see a little bit of the red come through, but I really like that vintage -y rough look. I am super glad I went with the black. I love the way a black furniture piece can really transform a space. The contrast against all of the white, the light rug, and the wood flooring. To give it a little bit of personality, I did paint the knobs that dark green. I kind of like that it ties in the side table a little bit. And then that green side table, I just love the way that all of my decor pieces really fit in with it. It's so rich and deep. I love the way that it matches my vintage lamp and all of my wood pieces. Everything just feels so much warmer. And I love how the green just seems to bring out the details in the legs. Every curve of this table just seems to be accentuated with this new color. This table is just sexy. It just looks like a one-of-a-kind piece. Seeing both these pieces transformed in my living room changes the entire vibe, the entire emotional connection to the space. I'm just, I'm in love.
And let's talk about that blanket ladder. I love, love, love this so much. I love how it reaches the height of the ceiling. It really draws the room upwards and makes it feel bigger. Although it's very simple, I feel like it just adds a bit of whimsy to the space. And I love that it can hold blankets and scarves. I like how the natural elements play with each other with the raw wood and then the rope. Both materials just feel so warm and really add something to the space. And last, that lovely pendant light. I actually wasn't sure where I was going to put this light, so for now I just put it in the bedroom to show you guys what it looks like. I kind of like it in this little reading nook. I think it makes the whole space feel cute and warm. I think it's adorable. To hang it, I'm using a wood L bracket that was painted white. I had these just lying around the house from an old project. I love upcycling a cool target find. So here's what I've learned from this DIY process. One, I didn't really know what my design style was until about halfway through. Another thing I figured out is that what was supposed to be a small DIY upgrades and a few cute DIYs is now turning into making over this entire living room. <laughs> I may or may not have taken apart my entire bookshelf. Um, so I hope you enjoyed part one of multiple parts to this living room makeover that I did not know was coming. <sighs> and hopefully I can do it with all the items I currently have in my home. I don't know yet, but we're gonna find out because <laughs> that's what we do. We're just making it work. <laughs> Oh dear. Thanks so much for watching this video. It means a lot. I hope you like the DIYs in this video. Da -da -da.